Hi, this is Phil from SkiTalk.com. We are here in New Hampshire at Fisher's headquarters previewing the 2024-2025 Fisher Ranger Collection. We hear Brian Landrin from Fisher. Brian, what is your title with Fisher? I'm the marketing director here in the U.S., um, so setting the brand strategy and getting the good word out about Fisher. Yep. So... Fisher, the Ranger, this, we're into our third year for the Ranger, right? Yep. Okay. Um, what I like what I see here, and we, we talked about this last year when we were talking about some upcoming graphic possibilities and different ways you could have gone with the collection. Um, I like what you've chosen here is that it's an evolutionary collection totally. as far as graphics. Uh, I think what a lot of people really appreciated with the Ranger collection when you release is it's a nice, simple graphic. Yeah. I mean, graphics sometimes won't sell a ski, but they'll stop a sale. And there are skis out there that people have shied away from because of the graphics. And I like that you've done a very conservative collection on it, but you added some boldness to the collection mm -hmm. for this year. Some brighter colors that pop, some accent colors that also pop. Yeah. I think you did a really good job with that. Let's just give a quick overview of the collection again for 2025, starting with the Ranger, same with the adult, the Ranger 84. Yeah, so the 84 was the new ski to the line. Um, well, it's out this fall, <laughs> yeah. uh, but we started talking about it last year. Yep. Um, so that comes back with a new graphic just to kind of clean up the story with the new design language you see here on the mm -hmm. Ranger. Still very simple, but Boulder Ranger word on the bottom there yep. and, and some new colors, as you mentioned. So the 84 is really the beginning of the line. Um, this ski is going to go for 649. Um, it doesn't have the shape TI like the other ones does, but it does have some metal under the binding plate for retention. Um, it's a snappy, quick ski. Um, you've got some early rise in the tip here, so it's still going to float you over the crud. Um, but really kind of that great East Coast free ride ski, kind of do it all. Um, and feel really stable underfoot while yeah. you're doing it. We talk a lot on the site about wide narrow skis and narrow wide skis, and what we've got here is a really nice narrow wide ski. Mm -hmm. Again, like you said, that free ride type ski and feel for a ski for that skier that wants to play a little bit, maybe venture into the trees a little bit, yeah. but they still want to ski that's performed well in the groomers. And what I also like about a ski like that, we get a lot of questions on, on the site and our readers from what is a good bump ski mm, and something totally. like this yeah. is a really good ski for somebody that is aspiring to be a better mogul skier i mean not talking world cup level zip right. line but something that is fun and playful in the bumps yeah. without compromising the rest of the rest of the hill and what i like with the colors that you've done in this i like the, the teal and the purple but i also like this black yeah i mean that really a, a sharp looking ski with the um the accents on it which is a little bit of a um bluish gray but that ski really works very well in this range it's rich it's bold and i think for this ski in this range here is a great ski for a lot of guys and even kids that don't want mom and dad skis totally so you've got a good yeah. good ski along that line there. yeah if you're coming off a carving ski or maybe you want to add a free ride ski to your quiver yep. and you don't live where it dumps snow all the time the 84 is going to be a great option yeah that is a really nice yeah. ski now we get a little bit wider we get into the 90s and 96s over here yeah so as we've mentioned in the past with the ranger line you can really see visibly on the top sheet here the technology within the mm -hmm. ski so as the skis get wider in the ranger collection you're going to see the shape ti start to shrink Yes. And then you're also going to see underfoot here what we call the flex cut start to yep. expand as you get wider as well. So if you're looking for a ski with a lot of characteristics of a Fisher ski, kind of that hard charging, kind of bust through anything type of ski, the 90 is a great option. This yep. is going to have the most heat and all underfoot yes. uh, and be really the most stable at speed. Yep. Um, the 96 is a great compromise if you're trying to get a little bit wider, um, have a little more versatility in snow types, things like that. You've still got quite a bit of uh, shape TI underfoot here, a little bigger flex cut, but this thing is also very stable at speed. Yeah. Well, I like what you've done with these two skis here is they're very purposely built. Right. Um, but some people think, well, that 90 is a less of a ski than a 96. That's not the case. No. They're, they're similar, very similar skis, but different purposes on yeah. them. And that's why we're seeing this a little bit longer on the 90 as far as the, the metal in the ski, because we're going to ski that on a little bit harder of snow tend to be then we're going to ski the 96. Right. So I think that was a really good idea in doing that in that design. And I think it really sets them up really well. And again, we've, we had these colors in the past, this specific 
specifically on the 96, but we added some pop to it, some accent to yeah, it. See that pop on the yep. purple sidewall there really adds a nice um, richness to the ski and, and really makes it stand out a little yeah. bit more than just the, the mango. The mango in that own. ski, I think, has been one of the high points in that collection. Now, as we get wider, we see a little bit of an answer to a question that a lot of people are asking was, where's the pink? <laughs> and that was in the old Ranger 102. Yeah. I mean, that ski it was probably built as being more on the one side of the wall for the women, but the guys love that right. ski too. And they wanted that ski to come back. And I mean, in our reviews of the ski, that's one of the questions is that we missed the pink in that ski. And we brought that back a little bit as an homage to that original 102 with the new 102. Totally, but we don't want to just rely on what we did in the past. We want exactly. to freshen it up a little bit. So yeah, this is really the pop color for next yes. year. This. Um, New purple 102 with that pink on the sidewall and on the accents and the word marks. Yep. But you also took another step. Yeah. So you can see on the basis here, we've got a flip-flop pattern. So this kind of goes along with the sustainability story we're telling at Fisher. It's um, actually you save a ton of material just using the inverse on each ski. Yeah. So super fun looking as well, but also has that... Um, sustainability story so i think that's key in this range of a ski that person that is skiing a ski is concerned about the environment i'm not saying everybody isn't but we have a little more focus here now we also do have the ranger in the gray 102 boring uh, <laughs> But and you want to have options for everybody. We do, absolutely. And, and, and this ski is what really kicked off the skis for skiers category for us. Yeah. So every Fisher ski, not dependent on the color, is going to have the same construction underfoot. And we did years of testing and actually worked with you guys yeah. on this story as well. So yep. um, it's been working out really well for us. And you're starting to see some brands tell the same story. No, I, I think so too. I, I think that's fantastic what you're doing here. And again, getting into the more muted colors there, there are people that are a little more conservative in in their their options there yeah. and then as we get into the the 108 and also the 116 we got some great colors here we again we brought some of these accent colors in here not to overwhelm the ski but a ski that looks really good and i, I will say the one thing too and we talked about this before we got on the air one of the things that really impresses me from working in retail, working with the customer face to face, and also working with you as far as testing and reviewing the skis, is Fisher really goes the extra length in finishing the skis. You guys have probably one of the best bases of anybody in the industry. I'm not saying anybody else that doesn't have good bases, but top of the bottom to the down to the entry level skis your finish is definitely one of the best it's a really nice margin grind on here so it looks really good it's going to work very well i mean you're talking a finish that is worth quite frankly if you brought your skis in about a hundred dollars yeah totally. so you're getting a lot of value in these skis along with their performance yeah so there's there's no compromises you're getting it top to bottom in a fisher ski and i something that we really really respect out there again we love the way that these ski skis and we've just had a great time on them they're a lot of fun because skiing is fun yeah hi everybody deb armstrong here and remember skiing is fun if you enjoyed this informative video hit that bell subscribe so that you'll stay up to date on the new videos and check out skitalk.com for more ski related content also please follow skitalk.com on all of your social media channels no basil was planted during the production of this video.